Hey there, before we start the show today, I've got one quick correction about an offer from our awesome new sponsor, Asamic. We had said that the code specifically for Marketing Clock users here, Design10, would give you $10 off. We were way wrong. It's so much more than that. It's actually 10% off your first month. So when you talk about it, that code Design10 still works, but it is actually packs more punch than we even thought was possible. So on to the show. On this week's episode of Marketing O'Clock. If you'd like to get more visibility in the SERPs, please leave us a very detailed, non-thin review of Marketing O'Clock thanks to the new Google Pro. Google is expanding their automated recommendations and you probably want to opt out of them. Google accidentally files a document that exposes their behavior as a word I cannot say per Google company policy. Uh, you don't want to know what happened to Mark on his most recent camping trip. A new clubhouse competitor makes Greg want to dance with somebody. Facebook retains a famous Canadian rapper as the chief evangelist for their newest social platform. All on today's show. Marketing O'Clock is your weekly dose of digital marketing news. A proud part of the Search Engine Journal podcast network. We record every week from the Cypress North Studios, located in beautiful Buffalo, New York. Tune in to our critically acclaimed Famous Friday News Show for insights, updates, rants, and much more as we cover the full gamut of digital marketing for you. If you want to follow along, just check out our show notes or head over to marketingoclock.com for all of the links from today's articles. And please subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Hey there, I'm Christine Zernheld. AKA Shep. I'm Mark Saltzarelli. And I'm Greg Finn. And it is officially Marketing O'Clock. Here on April 16th, 2021. Happy birthday, Jessica Budd. She's not listening, but if you want to, you can catch our famous Friday new show, new show on YouTube or your favorite podcast player each and every Friday morning. All your digital marketing news from the week. Powered by the digital marketing community. And if you want to join the conversation, hit us up. We're at Marketing O'Clock everywhere. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another show. We have a lot of news to get into, but Mark... You look a little different this week. What is going on with you? Oh my gosh, I just <laughs> trimmed off all of my beard. My mom and my grandma were not happy and they've been harassing me and I'm tired of like the mask <laughs> dent in it. I, I literally was spending like 10 minutes before the show every week combing it out and getting that mask dent out and it still was there. Very annoying. You couldn't and I'm have picked sure a, for summer. You couldn't have picked the worst time to have a long beard. I know. COVID. Literally, it was the first time I tried <laughs> it. But it was also COVID was a good time because I was experimenting with a long beard and not as many people are seeing me because we don't see people. Yeah. Well, if you want to see Mark's shorter beard, you can tune into the YouTube. Do you have anything else going on? Mm -hmm. No, I just, the only other thing was I went camping with my family at our property in the Southern Tier this weekend. I realized I have a lot of cooking incidents and like, (laughs) I think of myself as a good cook, but Friday night I spilled the au jus from the roast beef everywhere. Not the au jus. Yep. After we ate, I was going to put it away to save it. Spilled it all over the floor. <laughs> um, Saturday morning, my egg dish wouldn't cook, and it was in the oven for over an hour. And it's only supposed to take half an hour. Can I just say something to this? From what you're describing with your cooking, that is not camping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're, right? we're, we're, in, you camping? we're in this like house that like my like great 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 something aunt and uncle bill and it's like boards and like paper thin walls. Um, and as you on the floor, boards. yes. And then the last thing was my cousin's husband told me I couldn't cook anymore because I was having incidents. And then we can't fit bagels in the toaster we have there. So I put them in the oven. And when I put the bagels in the oven, the plastic tag from the bagel bag went into the back of the (laughs) oven and was melting. And my cousin's husband had to fish it out for me. Okay, well, don't cook for me. Yeah, I won't. But that sounds incredible. Greg, what's going on with you? I've got a problem at my household. I've got two six-year-old <laughs> twins, and we try to tell them like real things. We don't lie to them and tell them anything. And so we started talking about like the actual names of body parts. And we're going through playing some game Family Feud, and the thing was tush. And we're like, no, that means butt, but the technical name is this. And they set, heard it and started laughing, and now everything is 
the technical name of your butt. And gluteus it, maximus? No, anus. <laughs> so oh. everything yeah. is that. I mean, gluteus maximus is the muscle. Yeah, why wouldn't you just go for gluteus? But they just, that's what they call call each other all day long now. So that's fun. That's well, really how about you? cute. At least it's the technical term. Well, then you're talking about the weather is like talking about your vaccine. So HIPAA, but I got mine. And people are like, oh, how are you doing? How are you feeling? And I kind of want to be like, well, I had a baby three months ago, so I'm not really worried about this, first of all. But second of all, it was fine. The band-aids they give you are outrageous. It hurts so bad to take it off. It was so much worse than the shot. Has anyone experienced this? No, not no. anyone. Not I, even I, close. I don't know what they were using where you went, but mine was just like a normal band-aid. It was like super glued onto my arm. I had to like work up the nerve to rip it off. It was so terrible. I wanted to cry. And this is like the best PSA for being pro-vax. The biggest <laughs> challenge you're gonna face is the band is the band-aid so yeah. maybe I'd bring your own band-aid I, i'm going to to the next one and it's going to be like a cute design too so be ready <laughs> i don't know if i said on last show but when they when i got my vaccine the woman said oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> so, <whoa. laughs> wait i don't want a medical professional ever saying sorry to me while they're doing no, something it was still worth it like i, th- I think she might have moved it there's like a little drop of blood but it's still fine feeling great no problems <laughs> Get your vaccine. Yeah, that was our vaccine corner, but (laughs) we are going to rip the Band-Aid off and get into this week's episode. We have a new sponsor this week. If you are struggling with fresh visuals for your new affiliate offer, we've got you. Our friends from Awesomeic will cover all your design needs for a fixed monthly price. Just sign up, place a task, and see first results on the next business day, and no more hiring or stress. We'll get This this ad copy (laughs) does not do Awesomeic any type of justice can i make an ad read on the yeah. fly here so awesome is a way to outsource design and it is a critical tool for anybody that doesn't have a full design team around you and we're going to get into it a little bit more we've got an offer only for marketing clock listeners but if you need creative made for ads i guess affiliate offers <laughs> if you need anything made for your website landing page design you can do this you can basically have a repository a pool of professional designers and you can test it out for seven bucks for seven days. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna get into just how awesome Awesome Mic is later in the show, but we are gonna give you this code so you can get $10 off your first month with code DESIGN10, that is D-E-S-I-G-N, and it is awesomemic.io. All right, and first up in the news this week, there was a new algorithm update over on Google. And this update is designed to better reward product reviews that share in-depth research rather than thin content that simply summarizes a bunch of products, at least according to a spokesperson that told that to Barry Schwartz over at Search Engine Land. And this is dubbed the product reviews update. So the PRU, P-R-U? No, thank you. I like that they give it a name. (laughs) I like that this is at least a name and not the April Mm -hmm. Core 2021 update. I don't know. The Peru is what we call the Prudential Center in Boston, in Boston where like yeah. the mall is. So like I already have a Peru. Yes. Well, you have two now. Two Prus. Two. <laughs> and over on the, I believe it was the search, not the keyword blog. It was the other search console blog. Danny Sullivan wrote up a little post and had a few tips for people that were trying to perform better with this update. So he said, for those creating content, here are some additional useful questions to consider in terms of product reviews. Do your reviews express expert knowledge about products where appropriate? Show what the product is like physically or how it's used with unique content beyond what's provided by the manufacturer? Provide quantitative measurements about how product measures up in various categories of performance? Explain what sets product apart from its competitors? Cover comparable products to consider or explain which products might be best for certain uses or circumstances? Basically, have a good review. Like, that's what you look at all these (laughs) things, you know? And here, I know somebody that runs a review site. Everything has to be unique photos. You have to give it a grade. You have to talk about all these different value, the durability, all these different features. And that's what you want. You don't want somebody to just go out there and make an affiliate blog with bad offers because they didn't use Awesomeic and (laughs) just have a, a garbage review. So I think that's the big thing. Did you have any thoughts on this? I I love the the questions are outlined here. There's the thing that I really hate when I see a review and it's like great product, worked perfectly, three stars. And it's like that's not a review. 
Yeah. And it's just making me want to write better reviews for products that I like because I always forget to do good ones and I do like one bad one a year, but Mm -hmm. I need to be better about it. Yeah. And I think this is great because I love when review sites give you like actual prompts like these. So I think this is a good outline for if you're doing a review site, like who Greg knows to like ask people these questions rather than just being like, leave us a review, ask questions like this. Exactly. And then, of course, over on Search Engine Roundtable, Barry had all the charts and showed (laughs) everything happening. And this is, everybody just loves this segment here. But out of all the charts, I didn't really have one big winner. I had one big loser in the charts. Mm -hmm. And my biggest loser was Mozcast. Mozcast had a huge jump on the 8th of April, and nobody else did. There was nobody that had a huge jump on the 8th of April. Everything happened afterwards. So I'm wondering if they just finagled that thing in there, you know? Like, nobody else saw any movement. So I'm going <laughs> to go with loser of the charts this time, and it's Mozcast. And you know what? I'll give I'll give SEM Rush, a.k.a. SEMrush, the win. Because they got a little peak there after the 8th. Yeah. So. I would say the biggest loser is us because we're talking about these charts. Mm-hmm. The biggest winner? The audience. <laughs> all right. <laughs> no, not really. Um, all right. And then finally, Barry Schwartz asked Danny Sullivan on his at Danny Sullivan Twitter account if the core updates have an impact on Google Discover. And Danny said yes. So you can also think if you're being rewarded on search you will be rewarded on Discover. And then the breakdowns have already started happening. If you want to see anything, I strongly recommend that you just follow at Glenn Gabe on Twitter. He is the best at breaking down any of these algorithm updates, and he's already got some good action here and there. Um, and it's more along the health and some of the other um, verticals that have been impacted before. So that's it. New update, the proof. Awesome. I have some Google paid news. Matt Britton from Google wrote this big fluffy article called Searching for the Way Forward. Basically, the only thing in here that is new is this insights page, which was announced in October, but now it's available to all advertisers globally. Quote, marketers can see contextual and automated insights to help them adapt their business faster in a more dynamic world. So I looked at this for some of our clients and it basically just basically just shows you like what's trending Um, And it'll say whether it's something that you're kind of already capturing now with your search terms and you could expand or if it's something that you're not focusing on at all and they're recommending you do make campaigns for it. Um, It's cool that you have these top searches that you can click on and see like actual queries that people are searching related to that topic, unlike in your actual accounts where you don't have any search query data. Um, So that's nice. I don't think it's that nice. Have you looked at it? I've seen no, some No, I haven't seen anything good for any of our accounts is what I was going to say. Like, okay. mm-hmm. no good recommendations. I mean, it's nice that you have actual search queries because you don't. So but Google's so good at recommendations. I know. They give the best recommendations. And that's, I remember when this was announced, it was going to be tied into recommendations somehow and you could like press apply from this page, but I didn't see anything about that in here. So, Thank God. yeah. Never catch me pressing apply. Like, if I'm going to add something, I'm going to add it myself. Yeah. And speaking of which, this dumb article, first it's like, things are changing. Like, we know then they get into this insights page then tucked in at the bottom they talk about auto applied recommendations like get lost Shep I read this and I thought GPT-3 wrote it it is garbage (laughs) it It took me so long to find the news it is unbelievably bad this article there are 10 paragraphs that literally say nothing. Yeah. Nothing well, at all. They nothing. Didn't, they didn't even mean to publish it. It was just auto apply. <laughs> listen, 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 listen to this first paragraph. I can't think of a time when technology has been able to be more helpful to more people, families, communities, companies, and countries than today. At the same time, the ways people are using technology are more dynamic than ever. Technology has been a lifeline in lockdown, and it will be an important cat. Who cares? <laughs> it's like they're writing it for high school and there's like a character mm-hmm. number that needs to be well, met. So this is a Wendy's. You're on <laughs> the ads and commerce blog. Well, what are we doing? I, Wait, I also love it's like, there's never been like more technology like available to more people. And it's like, isn't that how this works? Like we come yeah. out with new things and more people get them. Everything about it was stupid. It's a guess, time has passed. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing of note in there, which I think is really important, is that they have the new change about being able to opt into more um, automation. Yeah. And, and these are things that you haven't been able to do before, like changing your bid type, right? Which is a huge yeah, that's a bad one. issue where if you're running just, let's say it's eCPC, and then you opt into this, you could be have all those campaigns flipped over to 
let's say you opt into maximize conversions, you will be auto flipped to max conversions, which is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Or what if it's maximize clicks? It could be that you can you can select whatever you want to be auto applied. I appreciate the fact that it's opt in and you have Mm -hmm. to go out of your way to do this. And in my mind, and of course, Barry Schwartz at Rusty Brick on Twitter uh, tagged me on this. Like, I can't wait for this reaction. I, I don't. I don't care if you're opting into this. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a big change of direction, and that mm-hmm. actually strikes me as a positive. Is that Agreed. this isn't a default because everything else that has been auto apply has been turned on by default. So for Google to make this something that has to be opted into is a major change from what we've seen over the past few years. And I do appreciate that. Yes, I think where it would become problematic is if you have to opt out of that because there is a insane difference between maximize clicks or target impression share versus CPC. Yes. So just double check and make sure you're opted out. <laughs> What what else is going on, Mark? Well, of course, it's another story about Google. And I'm going to say it because they won't and uh, they can't. Um, Antitrust. (laughs) (laughs) From Amy Bishop on the Search Engine Journal and Judy Serrano on Gizmodo. In a recent filing as part of an ongoing antitrust lawsuit in Texas, Google made a little bit of an oopsie. Um, we're presuming it's an accident. Um, I, it's, it has to be an accident, but they uploaded documents to the court's public docket that weren't redacted and were supposed to be. And we caught it before they re upload the documents and the redacted version has now been replaced. But the filing revealed a secret program called Project Bernanke, which Google used um, to benefit people using Google Ads um, based on their data from Google Ad Manager, Singular, and Google Ad Mob. So basically what they were doing is they were taking historical auction data from other ad platforms that were using Google Ad Manager, Singular, or Google Ad Mob for auctions to uncover what those other advertisers on those other ad platforms were paying and what Google would need to do in order to achieve the placements that they wanted and then presumably model their bids in Google Ads in order to win the auctions most important to them, presumably at the lowest rates possible. So this is just really concerning because if you think about it, Google controls every step of the supply chain. Um, With AdSense, they control publisher monetization. With Ad Manager and AdMob, they control ad auctions. And then with Google Ads, they control ad buying. And when you start using this information together, that's where it's kind of like, this is a monopoly, this is antitrust. So this lawsuit is alleging that Google is hurting both publishers, other ad platforms, and outside advertisers because they're, through this process of using that data to help themselves, they're diminishing publishers' ability to monetize content because Google has unfair data where they can pay less to the publishers um, because of the way they're manipulating bids. Um, And they're also increasing costs for those other ad platforms that are using Google Ad Manager and Google Ad Mob as their auction platform. And it's estimated that Google controls um, between 50 to 60% of the publisher market for monetizing their sites um, and then like the selling that ad space and then 50 to 90% of the ad auction space. Um, And by manipulating this space, it's estimated that Project Bernanke was estimated to generate um, $230 million in 2013 alone by using that data to manipulate the auctions. Mark, that was the best, most succinct reporting on this I've heard. (laughs) That was great. I had to read 10 (laughs) articles just to understand what was going on here. And I do think a big part of it is how confusing it is that Google owns all of these Mm -hmm. spaces and that the names aren't that different. 
<clears throat> and do we right. know who Bernanke is? Ben Bernanke? Yeah. So oh. that was the other thing. Fed chair, these... 2006 to something, I think. Oh, yeah, I but that's that. not even like for sure. Like all these articles are like, we don't know who this is. And that's the only tie we can make. And it doesn't really make sense to us. It's money. I mean, he, he ran the Fed. Like it's got to be based off of that. Like well, Hamilton could have been anyone, right? Why him? I don't know. The, the only thing that really struck me about this is, is being strange is I look at this and I'm like, this is not aligned with what Google's doing today. It's like they're trying to get cheaper costs for advertisers and they're trying to make it, you know, make help folks. They're shaking people's pockets. They're like, mm-hmm. you know, getting every nickel out of people now. This is like, and then I write, oh, 2013. This makes sense. Yes. That's when they were trying to be competitive. Yeah. Well, now they they're not. Now they're just people into Google ads by making Google Display Network cheaper than other display platforms right. by using the strategy. And now they've got everyone in it. They have acquired the market and now they're picking our pockets. Right. They, in 2013, they're trying to make Google ads a better product. They have stopped that years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, like, besides my clear laces thing for reporting, as you said, I think my other favorite quote came from Ken Paxton, the Texas Attorney General. And he said, In this advertising monopoly on an electronically traded market, Google is essentially trading on insider information by acting as the pitcher, catcher, batter, and umpire all at the same time. This isn't the free market at work here. This is anti market and illegal under state and federal law. So who are the fans in that scenario? Any fans or no fans? It's just like a COVID game. Yeah, I, I guess just whoever works at Google and gets all this money. <laughs> the publishers. <laughs> but not the, the publishers. publishers are the less. fans. The publishers no. are losing money. Yes. It's literally anyone who gets their money from Google okay. are the fans. Um, And Google, of course, maintains that the data acquired through their system is comparable to the data available to all the other ad buying tools using Google Ad Manager and AdMom. Um, But I think that this leaked information suggests otherwise. And I'm like, of course, it's the same company that said you're not allowed to say antitrust. Yeah. Um, And like sidebar this wasn't the only thing they accidentally released there was another shady dealing that was talked about less but google had a deal with facebook called the jedi blue deal in which facebook basically pulled back on their competitive tactics against google in return for special treatment um within ad auctions and Facebook just had like was given a spend requirement by Google, um, either in Ad Manager or Ad Mob, they could spend it either place. And of course, they try to make it make themselves look cool too. They're like, "Oh, Facebook, you're blue, and us, we're a Jedi, Star Trek." <laughs> oh, I didn't even get that. That's what they were trying to do, right? Like they're Star That's Trek so and they're blue. <laughs> yes, um, I just think like this is this story literally could have been a WTH, but it's made yeah. news. Okay. Yeah. Now it's time for this week's Take of the Week. This is a hashtag fire digital marketing take with extra spice served up for you. We simply deliver the take for your consumption. We give no opinions. We don't influence. You make the call. And this week's Take of the Week comes from Bastian on Twitter. And it is he is at Bastian31, B-A-S-T-I-E-N 31 on Twitter. And he had a tweet that said, how to waste your daily time, colon, turn a perfect instant access location report available in one click in every campaign, the user position report, into a bloated location report in the Google Ads report tab, hashtag PPC chat. I don't even think he got a single like. I gotta give him a like right now on this one. And it, he's right. The location reporting is now insane in Google Ads. And it reminded me of an article called What's Changed in Google Ads Location Reporting and Why You Need It in a Custom Report. And this article was over on Search Engine Land on October 6, 2020. And there was a statement saying, Google has been rolling out, quotation, simplified location reports in the Google Ads UI over the past month or so. Anytime a platform uses, quote, simplified or, quote, streamlined to describe a change, we have to wonder if it's a red herring. Does it provide an easier way to get the same access, data, and functionality, or it is a, quote, simplified dash wink wink with features and data stripped out? And that was from Jenny Marvin. So, thanks, great, Jenny. <laughs> great take, Pastor. 
so stupid they act like they're like trying to help us and get commuters it's like if i wanted the commuters i would get them myself thank you google well you're not making the platform better that's what i'm talking about there's nobody that looks at this and says i have to go to a different location and then there i can see look i can see the Mm -hmm. geographic data where before i could see it right within camp like that is not a better product like i was talking about with bernacki Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is why you should wear a fanny pack because you can't pickpocket the fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> like Google's doing to all the advertisers. And now it's time for this week's I See Why Am I. This is something that you just might not have seen. Maybe something you overlooked. But you shouldn't have I See Why Am I people. Gil David at Gil underscore run DMG has a tip for anyone looking to up their influencer marketing game. So he says, want a surprise in Facebook ad manager, use existing post, select post, and instead of choosing Facebook or Instagram, try branded content. If there's nothing there, the client needs to up their influencer game, but you can still head to their tag post section of their Instagram and get permission to use those. So call me Diet Coke because I tag them in a lot of things and they have terrible marketing people and they should call me. Great pitch. Now it's time for this week's lightning round. Pew, pew. At this point in the show, we split up our content into three parts. Paid, organic, and social. Today's lightning round is brought to you by our wonderful sponsor, Osmic. And we got a chance to use Osmic ourselves this week. We ordered this beautiful marketing o'clock mug. Wait, who came up with the design? Well, I don't even want to admit to it. Okay. I came up with the design, but I sent Greg like ten things, and I was like, "This one is so corny," and well, this is what he picked. <laughs> well, we want we wanted to we wanted to see the product and yeah. try it and make sure it's something we can recommend, and so we did the seven day trial, yes. and we said, "All right, can we actually turn around a design that's usable in twenty four hours?" Yeah. What's the answer? So we settled on a coffee cup. The answer is yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. We um, settled on a coffee cup. It's this beautiful design. It says medium roast, dark roast, light roast. And we've selected high row as instead because we're corny digital marketers. There's no tea on roast. I <laughs> thought it was funny. Literally two days ago, I sent this to Aloina at Awesomeic and she turned around the design. I literally just wrote it out and she sent it back to me and it looks exactly like I pictured. She was so mm-hmm. easy to work with and you can get connected with designers like her anytime you want and they'll turn it around within a day. It was an amazing experience. So people like this, we'll put it out on Twitter. We'll, we'll order some mugs and yeah. send them out. So check us yeah. out at Marketing Clock on Twitter and we will refine it. We'll use Awesomeic and then we'll get them made. And again, if you want $10 off your first month, you can use our code DESIGN10, D-E-S-I-G-N-10, and that is awesomeic.io. Life is too short for bad creative. <laughs> Love that. And getting on to the paid news this week from at PPC Greg on Twitter, he says, are people seeing Google taking more liberties in the queries they're allowing exact match to show for? Seems like they loosened things up a good bit. And this is more proof than ever that Greg Finn is actually PPC Greg. I am not PPC Greg. I happened to stumble upon this last week and shared it in our Monday marketing meeting. We leave the meeting and PPC Greg had tweeted this and Greg sent it to me. So they basically tried to give these match types new definitions like without us noticing because they're nothing like what they were with close variants. So it says broad match terms are terms that relate to your keyword. Phrase match are searches that include the meaning of your keyword and exact match ads may show on searches that are the same meaning as your keyword. Point is, we don't even know if it's loosening up because we can't see any search terms. Thanks, PPC Greg. (laughs) (laughs) And next up from this dude named Mark, Mark Saltarelli on Twitter at Marketing by Mark. He says, I've been pretty underwhelmed with Captera as of late, but the new competitor feature is cool. You select competitors in the vendor portal and Captera will suggest new categories to bid on. I was pleased with the results and I think they've added new directories. The best part of this was that Captera liked it later. I know. You know. <laughs> I shaded them a little bit, but I had to be honest. I haven't made the greatest quality as of late, but it's very clear they're investing in new features for their platform to solve that problem. Yeah. So thanks, Mark. Yeah. Thanks for the like. And from Larry Chassie at L Chassie on Twitter, he has an FYI for anyone running Amazon campaigns. He had an alert in his account that says advertising systems are starting to recover from the campaign display delays reported earlier. We continue to restore impacted campaigns. So if you want more information on that, make sure you log into your Amazon account and check it out. He also says happy Friday. Thanks, Larry. 
And from Amy Bishop, she wrote this awesome article on the Journal of Search Engines about Google's privacy sandbox's most recent conversion tracking proposals. And these include aggregating data to ensure that each person's activities and identity remain anonymous, limiting the amount of information reported about each conversion, and adding noise to the data that is reported to protect each person's privacy. Kind of like they added a bunch of noise to that article so they could like hide the part about automated recommendations from the bottom. Very bottom. Yeah. <laughs> and they get into specifics about how they're gonna handle view through conversions and cross device conversions in this too. Um, Amy's much smarter than me, so you can head over there if you wanna read it. It'll be in our newsletter. So these changes aren't good enough for DuckDuckGo, who announced that it is updating its Chrome browser extension with the ability to block Flock interactions on the website. Google should have thought of that when they named it Flock. Work on your names, oh Google. Block Flock is so good. Yeah. Can we get t-shirts? <laughs> <laughs> and next up, Tim Jensen from Clicks Marketing has an article on their blog about how to advertise on DuckDuckGo. The easiest way is by enabling search partners in your Microsoft ads campaigns for search and shopping ads. But if you do this, you need to make sure you're monitoring placements because we all know there can be some scary stuff in search partners, just like on Google. He also talks about how to run a publisher report in Microsoft advertising so you can monitor performance on DuckDuckGo, along with specifics about how your ads are going to display in the DuckDuckGo results. So that's a great resource. And again, it'll be in our newsletter. And especially if you have a technical solution, don't sleep on DuckDuckGo. Like we, we Mark and I just had a call where we had an opportunity come from DuckDuckGo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was a crazy conversion rate from lead oh, to awesome. opportunity compared to Google. Love to hear it. Again, new bookmark alert. LinkedIn launched a new ads guide to help marketers plan their campaigns. It includes image size info, call to action options, technical requirements, and more for each ad type. Um, if you go to the website, just don't click on the button that says visit now because it's not linked to anything. You're gonna have to scroll to the bottom of the article. What a great call to action. <laughs> <laughs> and a little birdie by the name of Andrew Hutchinson told me that Twitter is rebranding its ad options. They have recategorized and rebranded the entire ad suite and gone from 22 plus ad formats to just five categories with a corresponding suite of features that can be applied across them. So if you're experienced in Twitter ads, they have this like infographic that lays out this change really clearly and that'll be a great resource for you. Um, the new categories are promoted ads, follower ads, Twitter Amplify, Twitter Live, and Twitter Takeover, um, which is how I found out about the show Dad Stop Embarrassing Me on Netflix today because that was the Twitter Takeover. Oh my gosh, what a cute show name. Yes, yeah, starring Jamie Foxx, the inspiration <laughs> for one of my tweets last week. So Full circle. Yeah. And there is a leaked TikTok pitch deck, which of course Andrew Hutchinson got a hold of, and it gives some insight into new e-commerce ad offerings that are likely coming to the platform. So the first is collection ads, and these will enable brands to combine their product catalog listings and branded versions similar to YouTube product listings on videos. They also have dynamic product ads and promo tiles. Um, the promo tiles allow advertisers to add sales and promotional alerts to, to their in-feed ads. And also showcase tiles, which include creators promoting products in their video with a link to relevant products and thumbnails at the bottom part of the screen. So this is just a leak. We don't know if it's actually happening for now. Taylor Swift used to just release her whole album early if like it got leaked. So I think they should have done that. I thought you were going to make it without saying Taylor Swift that entire segment. <laughs> I was wrong. I went through that pretty fast. <laughs> we're going to have a long show today. <laughs> but that is it for pay. Let's go to organic. All right, first up in organic, we have an article from Matt Mullenweg from WordPress, and he shared, he talked about Wix and their dirty it. tricks. I love it. <laughs> you do love it, you psycho. I just like the article name. Okay, well, I, your Slack avatar is this creepy WordPress man with a screw face on, and it's scary every time that you Nobody message somebody. Nobody understands how that's related to yeah. Wix. It's because... Martini Buster's article had this avatar and I just loved it. So I made it my And I think avatar. it was from like their ad that they did. Yes. So the ad, so, so Matt basically took this ad that was a smear campaign by Wix and the Wix campaign kind of portrayed somebody going to therapy because they used WordPress and it was glitchy and this glitchy WordPress man was spilling water everywhere and it was a terrible ad. And so Matt Mullenweg had an article again, he, he started WordPress and is the head of automatic with, I believe that, that owns WordPress 
And he said, Wix, the website builder company you may remember from stealing WordPress code and lying about it, linked, has now decided the best way to gain relevance is attacking the open source WordPress community in a bizarre set of ads. They can't even come up with original concepts for attack ads. They've tried to rip off Apple Mac versus PC ads, but tastelessly personify the WordPress community as an absent drunken father in a therapy session. And you know your ad sucks when your competitor <laughs> talks about it and embeds it on his own block. And that's what Matt did. And I agree. It's a stupid ad. Why don't you try to show that you're good instead of somebody else's bad? I hate it. I, I just, that's such a power move. By Matt? Yeah. Yes. I love it. I love it. Here's the ad. Like it, it, this might as well be an ad for WordPress because these people suck. <laughs> I, I think it has, but I think it's just drawn more attention to WordPress. I agree. I agree. And, and and I think Shep's avatar has been leading the way. We got to have Caleb put that. And Caleb's out today. He's doing intern producer. Caleb is at school or something. <laughs> <Doing school. laughs> Sometimes he has to go to school. Yeah. All right. And the Google is shutting down the Google shopping app for iOS and Android. So if you like that app, too bad. You got to go to the web. <laughs> and I love too. just that they're like, here are all the awesome things you can buy by category in Google. We made this really cool like web thing. And then they get rid of the app. Like, what are we doing here? Does anybody like driving? Is anybody steering Google Shopping? Your thought is, I'm going to spend, burn oh, all my no, calories. No one's driving it. It's automated. And I'm going to spend all this money making these stupid best of product categories. And then I'm going to get rid of the app. And like, we now have organic stuff. Like the app is useful now. Right. And now we're getting rid of Why it. Why wouldn't they like give it a little bit longer with the organic stuff? I don't know. And you can get notifications. You can put price drops. There's so many things you could do with do Google Shopping. Do you use it? Is I it available for Android? I, I don't use it. <laughs> but it just doesn't make sense to be like, oh, we're getting rid of it. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Over on Unbounce, they released the 2021 conversion benchmark report. You can download it. One of the things that I loved is they have conversion rates by industry. Obviously, take it with a grain of salt. But I just took a little bit of umbrage with the fact that out of all the industries and all the CTRs, agencies were the lowest. So... We're going to buck that trend here at Cypress North. Well, I think it's more for like agencies promoting themselves. Right. Like B2B. Are doing. Right. So we're going to turn that, we're going to start advertising, turn that number upside down in 2022. Okay. All right. Next up over on Google search central, there's an update to Google discover and essentially you can't show up from a few specific types of content, job applications, petitions, forms, code repositories, or satire without any context. So see ya onion. I mean, I guess it makes sense where if you can't know that something's satire and you don't necessarily see the logo that big, you wouldn't want to fall prey to some fake news. Yeah. It's just about some people don't know how to use the internet, which is why we can't have nice things like satire. Yeah. I feel like they like didn't survive this year's election. Like, it was just too much. <laughs> <laughs> it was too believable sometimes. <laughs> All right. And next up in Google My Business, you cannot use phone numbers in Google Post. You have to go through the actual way to implement a phone number. You can't put it in a post. You can't try to get extra visibility. Sorry. And then over on Google Podcast, they have hit 100 million installs on Android. And that's fantastic. They launched in 2018. You should be syndicating to Google Podcasts. If you do a search, it's many times of the word podcast is in there. You'll see it show up in the search results specifically. Um, and it's what I use. It kind of it's not great, but it's it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> All right. And Google is updating the cumulative layout shift scoring. I don't really care about this, but there was a way that the scoring was negatively impacting some people based on the time on page. That's gonna be gone. of sites might see a small improvement in their CLS. That kind of sounds like Cialis the way I said that. That's not good. Yeah, you got to stop talking so fast. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like the guy at the end that just goes through all the the symptoms you get. And death. (laughs) (laughs) All right, over on Search Engine Roundtable, Barry Schwartz has an article essentially based off of 2019 BFF show Glenn Gabe's tweets where Glenn had pulled out some information from a recent webmaster or SEO office hours, I believe. And Glenn had talked about the fact of, should you have different sites if some of your content is YMYL, your money, your life, and if it mixes in things that are not your money or your life. 
And the answer is you should segment the sites. I mean, you should have a site that's got a theme in my mind. And if your theme is like, it's about things that are really important, maybe you don't mix satire in there. Like, I get that, but I guess if you got non YMYL plus YMYL, the, you, you get YL, you lose. <laughs> All right. And Google also has a soft 404 bug. It's being fixed. So if you see that issue, uh, don't worry. And then lastly, if you're trying to get rid of bots and you're trying to stop people from one country coming in, John Mueller had said, don't block Googlebot. So don't do that. All right, Mark, what is happening in social? Well, first up, we have a, f- a lovely social network doubling down on their commitment to avoid original ideas at all costs. Facebook is launching a new test that combines two things that I do not use, Clubhouse and Instagram Live. The app will be called Hotline. And the only meaningful differences this has from Clubhouse are that it's web-based, it has optional video for speakers, and the host can save a recording. So basically, they just made Zoom into a social media Something that no one's asked yeah, for in the me past out. year. <laughs> I gotta say though, the name is kind of fire, right? Oh, Hotline? no, that's and good. They should they should consult Drake for some advertising here. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. You know when that hotline bling. <laughs> Get you know all he hot. should do is approve the use of that meme where he goes, he, he looks at this and it's like Facebook. Clubhouse. Yeah, it's it, Facebook Hotline. And then it's Clubhouse. It's like, that. Okay, well, make sure you're watching the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put Very it on Twitter. Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to have someone make the meme, and Caleb will put it on YouTube, and it'll be fantastic. Um, and speaking of Clubhouse trying to keep up with all of these hot new competitors, like Hotline by Facebook, um, in all caps, um, Clubhouse's Android version is finally moving closer to completion. So, Greg, it's too you can late. Finally, join Clubhouse. It's oh. too late. How did you not prioritize this? I didn't even know they were trying. Well, they it's were not like... done yet. They okay. just shared a screenshot of like one of their Android developers' profiles, like on the Android version. So, as far as we know, like it could only be like there's profile functionality on Android. Like you can make a profile. So, who knows? Um, Nobody's going to care How by the time that it's actually done. Is. <laughs> I know. We'll all be on hotline. We'll all be out in the world. We'll no, be, we'll be talking yeah, to people. Vaccinated. <laughs> Next up, we're going to move over to Snapchat as they've acquired a fashion recommendation app called Screenshop to advance its e commerce efforts. Basically, all the young whippersnappers um, who use the platform. Got it? Oh, God. Snappers. Oh, <laughs> Can use Screenshop to scan the photos saved to their memories and start receiving tailored fashion recommendations from over 450 brands. And this was paired with some other fashion and e-commerce updates they've been doing, including AR try-on tools for makeup and shoes, and what I'm excited about, new Bitmoji fashion products to boost branding efforts Ooh. because I just really, really want Shop Spitmoji's coat. She it has a really fabulous. cute coat. We, we need to put it in the YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's looking good. So you can look at the, you, you can get this, put it on your Bitmoji and be like, that looks snappy. Um. Yeah, I guess. I, I'm yeah, rolling guess. my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with this chat. Oh my God. Do you want me to put a pin in that? Yes, Mark. Okay, because <laughs> Pinterest announced a creator fund to support its creators. Um, so creators can make um, money now off of what they're doing on Pinterest and a new creator code initiative to encourage positive interaction on Pinterest. I feel like it's such a positive place already. I know. It's going to be just like sunshine and rainbows all the time. And now moving on to our darling favorite social media platform, TikTok from Andrew Hutchinson at AD Hutchinson on Twitter. TikTok adds new music triggered visual effects tools for new creative options within TikTok clips. Basically, um, the music you have in your TikTok can now trigger 
a visualizer, which I'm thinking is going to be like kind of like when you have Christmas lights and it goes with the music and it's going to make an image based off of that. Oh, I like that theory. Yeah, that's that's what it looks like to me. And it like creates like a little world. But so get some Trans-Siberian Orchestra in there and see what happens. I saw this image up on your computer earlier today because I like sit behind you and to the right. And I was like, what are you doing? (laughs) I'm just talking. (laughs) Just picture this on Mark's computer in the middle of the workday when we show it on the YouTube. And Mark's just sitting there pointing at nothing in the air. (laughs) I'm just like bopping. It's my little world of purple moons and little mountains. (laughs) Um, In addition to the fun little visualizer, they can also do a series of still images that go with the music, um, text, or funky visual effects, which I don't know how that's different than the visualizer, um, and as well as display transitions. And while we're talking about all of the people using this feature, I think these tweens need to move over because this is grandma's house now. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. TikTok's providing insights on how older users are engaging on the platform. They don't mean grandmas. They mean like how I'm on TikTok. Um, No. Do you want me to to read this to you? Okay, I'm ready. Um, Quote from TikTok. Every day, millions of parents. Shep. Teens. (laughs) grandparents and in-betweens come to TikTok to share snippets of their day-to-day life. Now we see perfectly choreographed dancer teens from the whole family, including grandma. Oh my God. I don't believe grandma the grandma. twice in there. Like, so, so grandma's talking. My grandma can't even use a flip phone. Yeah. I will say I didn't make a TikTok until I had a baby and we just post pictures of her dancing. Mm-hmm. And she's great. She Thanks. is a natural born talker. Yeah. Babies so. aside, is anybody else sick of everything being dancey? Um, I just sometimes don't no, need it. No, that's just because you are version. afraid of dancing, Greg. And it's okay, but like let other people enjoy it. Mm-hmm. My thing is I like dancing. I just don't like this like choreography. Right. What are we doing? Can't we just talk about so everything's got to be a dance? Well, like, I mean, okay, but you don't need to, like, worry about that with this demographic. So if you want to go, like, TikTok with the grandparents of the world, um, according to this article from Andrew Hutchinson, the number one thing they're talking about, like, TikToking about, um, <laughs> home appliances. I am bringing white appliances back. Look at this. Gorgeous refrigerator. It got all the matching appliances. It gets better. Look at the inside. It's by Cafe. They are brand as what? The, what, what like, they don't need I don't dancing know like, home what they're doing like TikToks Content. about their home appliances like that's why they're on TikTok and <sighs> four burner <laughs> so, <laughs> induction like, what yeah, like come on get the points no. <laughs> this is my I, double oven I just don't understand where we went mad and everything has to be a dance yeah. and now PPC Kirk's trying to make PPC TikTok well he puts songs out I like that <laughs> I, he's not just sitting there dancing Mm-hmm. You're just jealous because you can't do it. I can dance. <laughs> I can dance. Okay. Well, okay. I think we're just going to have to put a, a clip of you dancing on the YouTube channel. <laughs> okay. All right. Now on to our segment segment here. We've got a new segment, Pod to Pod. And this came from listener of the show, Christine Strange, at Christine Strange on Twitter. And that is K-R-I-S-T-I-N-E. So weird hearing you say Christine. Oh, not AKA you. not Shep, <laughs> but she put out a tweet letting us know about the new Women in Tech SEO podcast with Sarah McDowell and Arij Abdu-Ali. And they had a big guest, first guest, Jamie Albertico, and they talked about SEO ethics and disinformation. Kind of a little dark there, but it was good on the ethics side of things and SEO. Yeah, and if you just want to have like some ear candy of a lovely British woman talking to you about SEO, like please tune in. Yeah, and Sarah, she has I believe, the best podcast voice. If you listen to SEO SAS, she was one of the hosts there, and now she's over on um, doing Women in Tech SEO podcast. So check it out. And that brings us to our real life segment, straight out of our accounts and into your ear holes. It's time for Working Hard or Hardly Working, where we talk about what's going on in our IRL work, good, bad, or otherwise. So um, something that has been saving me lately is Slack reminders, and I forgot about it for a while, but if you get a message, you can ask to be reminded about it 
to be reminded about it later. It's nice if you like want to open something at night, but you can't necessarily act on it right then. It's amazing. Also, Greg always makes fun of me for messaging myself in Slack. I'm like constantly having a I conversation. I might do it more than you. But it's so nice when like you want to recall something and Slack has like a really good search yes. tool. So you can find stuff from like last year. So whenever I get an idea for this, working hard, hardly working, I message it to myself. Always. Yeah. I take all of my notes in Slack. Like I, unless it's like we're doing like a sales call and I'm like outlining this to share with other people. I'm just constantly taking notes in Slack by messaging myself. It's great. It's so easy. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. What about you, Mark? I have a little tip from one of my absolute, absolute favorite marketing tools, Zapier. Um, I love it because you can automate the weirdest things and like also the most practical things. Is it similar to Zapier? <laughs> I I'll Zapier just stop. Too. I'll, I'm going to leave. <laughs> 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 but basically, um, one thing is like our account, we use it for all of our clients. So we have a lot of zaps in there and you have a limited number of zaps. So sometimes you need to turn some off, but it can be difficult to see which ones are still running and doing things and which ones aren't. So you can go to your zap history and see which zaps have triggered actions recently. And that way you can, if you want to double check if a zap is still doing anything before turning it off, you can pop into that zap history and see when the last time it triggered an action was. It's really cool. Really cool. Do you know if it works with zapes too? (laughs) (laughs) That's so true. You're just wrong because you don't call them zapes. I know. (laughs) All right. I I kid, I Um, kid. When when two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. (laughs) I don't know what that means. (laughs) All right. And for me, one thing, I, I don't think I've shared this yet. I went back through and I don't think I have. But Zoom direct messaging, it is dangerous, but amazing if you're on these zoom calls with somebody and we have one client that all the time just dms me via zoom and goes is this right and i'm like no it's wrong <laughs> you know and it's so cool to be able to have like one-on-one conversation with somebody in the zoom that's like a client um directly but it can be dangerous yeah. you have to make sure you're dming somebody if you message in zoom and now for this week's cool tool as a reminder, our cool tool segment is not an official endorsement or paid mention. We're simply sharing something we found in our travels that may be of use to our listeners and is really, really cool. This week's cool tool is a great update from Screaming Frog at Screaming Frog on Twitter announcing Screaming Frog SEO Spider 15.0. This update includes crawl comparison, site structure comparison, Change detection, also known as parity checks, URL mapping for staging comparison, and more. Hope it's helpful. Now it's time for our must-read marketing article of the week. An article so advanced, so in-depth, so detailed, that we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. All right, and this week's must-read marketing article of the week comes from 2019 BFF of the show, Glenn Gabe. And over on the G Squared Interactive site, gsqi.com, he has a very robust post. Smart Delta Reports, how to automate exporting, filtering, and comparing Google search data across timeframes via the Search Console API and Analytics Edge. And if you haven't followed Glenn, He's where I even learned about Analytics Edge. He, ta- he t- blogs about it a bunch. I think he's got that linked in the article. But it's basically, in his mind, he put out a Panda report that was very popular. And this is the Delta report is a Panda report on steroids. It's the power of Analytics Edge and APIs. So Glenn has a bunch of GIFs in there and very um, step-by-step instruction on how to make a Delta report is the name. So again, you do need Analytics Edge, so that's one thing of note. But if you're looking to pull that information out and be able to slice and dice it, this is the article for you. It is a phenomenal article. Just make sure that you massage that scroll, wheel, finger, because there's a lot of information there. So thank you, Glenn. Or we can use the space bar just told us last week. Oh, I forgot. All right. That does it for today's show. It is now officially not Marketing O'Clock. Remember, you can catch everything from the show by signing up for our newsletter over on Marketing O'Clock. And thank you to our fabulous 
sponsor Awesomeic. Remember, you can get $10 off your first month by using Design10, that's D-E-S-I-G-N 10 over on Awesomeic. If you just want to try it out, seven days, seven bucks. And head on over to at Marketing Clock on Twitter to see our coffee mug that is pretty close. I like it. You won't regret it. And we will see you next week. Thanks for listening to Marketing O'Clock, part of the Search Engine Journal Podcast Network. If you're looking for more information on today's topics, head over to marketingoclock.com for links to all the articles that we covered. And please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. Welcome to this week's Shooting the Hack. We're after our famous Friday news show. We don't talk about marketing anymore. We just... Shoot the hack. And today we are playing a new game because I was doing some research on DuckDuckGo for my articles for the show and I realized that their knowledge panel pulls from Wikipedia people's like pseudonyms or other names right into the search results. Oh no. And it's some of them are like really random like things you would never care about. Um, so I'm going to quiz you guys and I'm going to give you the pseudonym and see if you can guess who the celebrity is. I'm so excited for this. Okay. So there's I have a, I have a, a guess one might be Taylor Swift. <laughs> They're all Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get five. Okay. Unless it runs long. Okay. Well, this first one is so easy though. Okay, so we're gonna do buzz in. So we buzz in with our yeah, name. Yeah, buzz in. Yeezy Yeezy. Craig. Yeah. Kanye. Yeah, you got it. Okay. The next one is Joaquin Raphael Bottom. Greg. Yeah. Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. I was going to say that. Okay. I don't know how to Wait, pronounce Wait, do I lose it. a point or do I, am I just at two? Why would you lose if it? If I guess wrong. No. Okay. Because the rest oh, of them, sure. nobody's going to get. This. Okay. The next one, I don't, do not know how to pronounce. Hegneen? Hegneen? Craig, Kevin Sorbo. No. Do you want to <laughs> Who is that? I don't know anything. <laughs> Do you want to guess? Um, Meryl Streep. No, it is Kim Kardashian's Armenian like, baptism name. Oh, I knew that. Nils Sojberg. Greg, mm-hmm. Liam Neeson. No. <laughs> um, Mark, Steven Spielberg. No, it's Taylor Swift, guys. Ah, <laughs> oh my gosh. I knew it. She used it for songwriting credit it. on her song with um, her ex boyfriend, and then she—I'm not going to name him—and then on one of her music videos, she like buries Nils. It's like iconic. Okay, Robert Gil- sounds like it. <laughs> Robert Galbraith. Can you shoot me that link? Oh my god! You Sorry. might know this one, Robert Galbraith. Greg. Yeah. Bob Saget. No, you're not going to know this one. I would know it. I think maybe. I don't know. That threw Greg, me off. Ralph Macchio from Karate Kid. Who are any of these people? <laughs> it's J.K. Rowling. Oh yeah. Oh. Melissa Jefferson. Oh, we're still going. Yeah. Um, Britney Spears. No, Greg. Lizzo. Oh, Melissa Etheridge. You wouldn't have known it anyway. It's Lizzo. I thought maybe you'd know that one. I don't know names. Okay, Laura Jean. A last name I'm not going to say because it's her last name. Greg, Lady Gaga. Laura Dern. No. <laughs> Greg, Laura good. Ingalls Wilder. No. Peter Jean Hernandez. Oh, that one was Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I, I like, do the game? That? This is worth the game. This is not everybody's favorite game. Okay. I think it's fun to know this information. I just wish I was better at it. Peter Jean Hernandez. Greg. This isn't fair. Like, you're just gonna buzz in and <laughs> it's then game not say theory. Anything. I could just do this. Oh my god! I'm gonna go this is with obnoxious. I'm gonna go with. I don't have an answer. I, I don't even remember what the name was. It's Bruno Mars. Fred Fred Ward from Tremors. No, no. I just what? feel like <laughs> I if this was, one person if you this was Jeopardy, you'd be losing so much money just buzzing in and not saying anything. Okay, last one, Bernard Webb. Oh, oh. Greg might actually know it. Oh, um, Mark. Yeah. The weekend. No. Do you have a guess? Oh, wait. 
<laughs> the only Bernard I know is that jerk from Guess Who with the stupid hat, the fuzzy hat. <laughs> Guess who? Oh, you don't know who Guess who is? Oh, um, the game. The game. Okay. Where Bernard just has oh. a smug no. look on his smug little <laughs> face. That's the oh only thing God. I can think of. I'm trying to think who How looks do you like remember that. His name? Rob Riggle. He looks the most like Bernard. How about it's that? It's Paul McCartney. He used it as a songwriting name. Okay. Well. Everyone did a terrible job, but Greg won. And we'll see you next week, and we're never playing that again. Great game, Shep. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of Marketing O'Clock. If you're looking for more, we release new episodes every Friday with all the digital marketing news of the week. You can listen and subscribe wherever you consume your podcasts. Or click to read all the articles from this show or watch the previous episode.